Alright, what's up, internet? It's uh, Daniel Sterry here. Um, we've got our notes. It's Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we're doing another review, uh, well, a review, of the uh, the new Nye Harvest record. It kind of looks like that, uh, less bright, um, and also there's not a reflection of my webcam in it. Um, we are doing uh, Nye Harvest's hair wall. Um, Nye Harvest is a uh, Sheffield, UK, two-piece uh, indie rock band. Um, known for, you know, kind of stylizing um, the uh, emo revival sound. They uh, put out the first record in like 2011, uh, I think, um, and I, I thought it was okay. I kind of liked it. I was excited to see where they would take it, and they got another um, record out a couple years ago, uh, I think 2013, and that one was pretty cool too. Um, so I was excited to see what they were going to do with this one. Um, Again, they're a two-piece from uh, UK, from Sheffield, UK, and they have the most embarrassing style of any band I've ever seen. They have weird haircuts, they wear uh, clothes that would make your dad cringe, um, but they're fun, uh, or at least I thought they were. So we're going to dive into Hairball, which um, came out almost a month ago, I think. Uh, I don't know, I haven't, um, I haven't checked the date on it, but... Um, it's an interesting record, uh, Hairball. Uh, it starts out with this song called Spin, um, which, you know, kind of set off the album, set the tone for an album, and you could tell that it was going to be a, a sort of a different direction for them. It was, like, a lot more distorted. They weren't focusing so much on the um, musicality as far as much as just, like, banging out, you know, a, a lead riff or whatever, just playing songs and rocking out, having a good time. Um, but um, it it, get, it got to be a little bit cumbersome of an album. Um, there was you know these repetitive riffs that you know you could tell they were playing the same riffs in different scales throughout the entire album. Um, it it was just exhausting to get through. the The record itself was um, not spectacular. There was um, it was a very tiring listen. Uh, it was just like one kind of like poppy like surfy kind of, you know, garage rock song after another, but instead of, you know, going with the regular vein of, like, underproduced garage music, they went with this really sleek, like, really clean, um, overproduced garage aesthetic, which turned into kind of a mess, kind of made a mess of it, and, uh, I, I, I didn't really, uh, enjoy it that much. There were a few songs on there that really stood out to me. There was, um, Drinking Bleach was a cooler song. It was slowed down. Um, it wasn't a slow song by any means, but it was slower than the rest of them, and it had this really cool, like, uh, lyrics. It had a cool intro. It it just, it was more interesting. They played it in a different key than the rest of the songs, but one song after the next, after the next, just, um, it was overwhelmingly, you know, similar. Uh, that was really the only thing. It was I. I would hear one song and then another song and then another song and then another song. And I couldn't really differentiate them because they would do the same sort of thing over and over again. And it was it was cool that they produced it the way they did. They had some really like not clean instrumentals, but um, there was a distortion. But you could definitely tell what the guitarist was playing. And um, it was under a really reverb heavy heavy vocals, distorted reverb heavy vocals the entire album through. It's like they just played the songs, just played them through on the record, um, which, you know, is good and bad, but, like, if you're gonna make an album, you might as well, like, mix up your effects a little bit and just do, you know, whatever you're planning on doing, um, but yeah, it was just, it was surfy, it was kind of boring, um, there was, it was very repetitive, it was all in a verse chorus verse format, every single song on the record, uh, even the one song that I liked, um, there was just, you know, for example, on, like, Ocean of Madness, there was a song that, it was a song that was, like, it started out with this, like, interesting sort of, like, drum and bass sort of, like, plotting interlude, and then, or this intro, and then it, you know, built into this guy singing, and then the guitars, like, kind of came in, like, underneath everything, but it just, it felt really weird, because they sounded more, like, radio static in the background than they did, like, any, um, melody or anything. There was, uh, Melanie, which was another just, like, pop rock, just throwaway song about, you know, some woman, uh, 
it's just there was a breakdown at the end that stood out to me as sounding like a Green Day song. There was a lot of uh, do do do's, like a lot of just sung like weird little goofy things. There was a lot of really weak lyrics all over this thing. Like on all the time he was saying, uh, "I want to be free, uh, want what you want all the time." It was just you know tiring. There was. Um, on Buttercup, there was a Why Can't I, Why Can't You lyric just repeated throughout the song. There's like, at least the th songs were thematically consistent, but only so because of the amount of repetition they had. And there weren't as many like really snarky, smart lyrics as they had on the first couple of records. It was just like really weak choruses that were not worth the endless repetition throughout this album. Um, it was just not something I enjoyed, and I hope that soon enough Nye Harvest puts out something a little better, um, and I hope that this isn't the direction that they're taking because it's not, didn't work out for them, uh, at least I didn't think so, I mean, if you liked it, that's cool, tell me about it in the uh, description, uh, I'm giving this record a um, 3 out of 10, a uh, strong 3 out of 10. It wasn't great at all. <laughs> it did, I didn't like it. I had to take breaks in between because it was just so much of this of the same and the same. Um, so yeah, uh, Daniel Sterry, uh, reviewing Night Harvest. If you have anything to say to me, anything to say to my family, uh, anything to say to my banjo or this sleep album right here. Put it in those comments right there. If you want me to review anything, again, comments right there. Um, thank you very much for watching. I will... Yeah.